Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, others. <laughs> what if, imagine being referred to as other. Well, I mean, I try to think if it's the worst thing I could be referred to as, like, without actually being, like, degraded. And it's, it is kind of bad, to be quite honest with you. I, I don't think I enjoyed that. I feel like referring to someone as other is, like, the old, out-of-touch way of being, like, Oh yeah, I accept everybody. Uh, boys, girls, others, and they're like, that's fine. Nobody would get offended by that. I mean, okay, here's the thing, like, innately there's nothing, like, cynical about that statement. I don't know. I don't know. It, it seems just very, like, eh, and, and those... I mean, to be fair, though, like when you're you're using that to encompass a, a bigger group of people that you don't that you don't want to limit to a certain category. So I, the problem is, is I'm trying to think what words would I use in their place. I mean, I guess like what people are, you know, I, yeah, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But anyways, welcome back. You know where you're at. You've been listening to us for 85 weeks straight, and if you haven't, get on that. That was it's a frying pan podcast. That was so assertive. You're like, you know who we are. You know well, I mean, where you are. You know where you are. You f you're here for a reason. I mean, it's, yes. you found a way here somehow. Hostage. Um, it, that's what it is. I pe put people at gunpoint. I'm like, listen to this. And like, okay, okay. But um, person with the gun to your head, that's me. It's Dan. You, you can look to my your left, it's probably me. Um, he's probably not here, he's probably doing something. Uh, the co-host of the show is... He's, I see, that's where... He, I see, I thought you were introducing me there. Like I, I was going to, but then I'm like, I don't, I don't do that, ever. I, yeah, it felt like you did, though. I was I was big silent, I was like, ooh, where's, what's my introduction? And then you just... Now I'm late on the draw. What's up, guys? It's me, it's your boy, Robert D'Anafrio, coming at you, not live, pre-recorded, just to say what's up. How you doing? It's the man that sold me the gun, Robert D'Onofrio. Is that good? <laughs> Do you like that one? The man that sold you the gun. I, I, I feel like that's like worse, arguably. Well, I don't know. Is that worse? It's probably not good any way at all. Am I selling? Quite honest. Did I legally sell you the gun? Um. Or am I like a black market arms dealer? Well, I don't have a license, so like I would assume illegally. Okay. Well. I mean, I was gonna say it's better than selling drugs, but then I was like, "Well, is it though? Is it?" No, I think I. Mm -hmm. mm, we, uh, we don't have to get into it. I mean, don't worry about it. to be fair though, yeah, I am kind of curious, like what what you think would be worse. To be fair, they're both bad in their own right. They're both bad, bad, not good. I'll leave yeah, it I leave mean, at that. I guess it depends on what drugs you're dealing. Like if you're selling weed, that's fine. <laughs> Fucking heathen, put you below the prisons. Yeah, <laughs> 200 years. Weed? Get out of here. You're, I'm sorry, sir, you're selling weed? Yeah, um, we're gonna put you in the pit. Imagine if that was a thing. Like, um, for like, the worst criminals, they just dug, like, a 100-foot deep hole, and they just, like, brought them down. They're like, alright, good luck. Didn't they used to do things like that? I think, like, before, uh, like, treating your war criminals with, uh... With respect was a thing. I'm pretty sure we like I I say we, but I'm pretty sure like like we would put them in just holes in the ground like that. Like I think that's an actual thing, right? Like for a type of prison, just a hole in the ground, a lone hole, with no ladder. I wouldn't be surprised. Put them in the hole. I feel like I've heard that in movies as well, and they refer to just a hole simply in the ground that they cover up. Well, I mean, like in. You know, in 300, you have that endless hole that people get thrown in. That's it's different. I'm not saying, like, we're throwing people, like, 100 feet to their death. I'm saying just, like... Put them down there. Yeah, we just got, like, ca like a cave system down there. Jeez. Actually, you know, I uh, I read a book series, and there is a story arc where one of the main characters was, in fact, in a prison, right? And then mm -hmm. in that prison was just a big hole. If you fell down that hole, that's where the real degenerates were in the prison. So, now that I've thought about this scenario more and more, I'm now kind of freaking myself out, because it was very, like... It, it almost ma it made me claustrophobic to read, so I can't imagine what it would be like actually, like, being forced down into a hole deep in the ground. 
I mean, I'd sure hope you couldn't imagine it. I'm, just, I'm hoping that's not a thing that you can, um, you know, picture in your head. Mm. Are you one of those people that find one of the scariest things to them being buried alive? Um, nah, not really. Thank God. Like, well, I mean, I agree that it's scary, but like, here's the thing: like, I'm scared of drowning because I've been in positions that I will that I could drown in. Right? I've I've yeah. yet to be in a position where I could spontaneously end up buried alive. Well, okay, I guess like I could be buried under my house in rubble. But the thing is, I'm like, I'm I'm going by like. You know, what people actually picture when they think, uh, I have a fear of being buried alive, you know, like being put in a box and buried. Yeah, like coffin six feet under. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, I I remember, like, back when Fear Factor, I don't know if Fear Factor is a thing anymore, but when it oh, was, like, a popular thing. That show was nuts. Yeah, that was, like, one of the challenges, and then they'd, like, fill up the coffin, like, you'd, your partner would have to dig you out, and it was, like oh, they can't breathe, they're like, we're gonna fill the coffin with spiders, and I'm like... Oh, yeah. It just seems, seems unnecessary, right? It's like, oh, we're gonna put you in a box full of spiders! It's like, why? Why? Yeah. Like, what... For for what? It's like, today on Fear Factor, we're gonna cover you in worms and put you in a hole! It's... Huh? It's, yeah, it's like, I mean, like, it's scary, it's just more inconvenient than anything, yeah? Like, you're just kinda like... You don't have to do this. It's already worse, like as it is. You don't got to top it. You know. But I mean, no, that's that. That, that thing never really scared me though, because I never like thought of it as like a realistic thing. Yeah. I mean, now that I say that, karma will probably come around, and I'll be like, they'll think I'm dead, but I'll just be in a coma, and then they'll bury me, and then I'll wake up. And I'm like, oh. I mean, I don't think that that actually works in modern day medical science. Like, unless we took you out back in the Amish community, and their only metric was like, well. He doesn't sound like he's breathing. That's fair. I mean, I guess based on um, the nighttime of our camping trip, I wouldn't know what it would look like ah, to be buried alive. So, so you brought up a good point. Dan and I have survived yet again another camping excursions into the what camping excursion into the White Mountains, where we hiked over three mountains and then camped out in some random part of the forest. Mm. And you brought up the the we can talk about the the camping trip and our experiences, but you brought up the darkness there. Do you want to describe that for our listeners with how fucking literally how dark it was? Yeah, I mean, it was probably like six o'clock. We started setting up camp, and around eight o'clock, everyone was kind of like, "I don't really want to be awake anymore." So <sighs> well, we when started you, when you hike eleven or ten miles, whichever one it was, and. A lot of that's uh, just, you know, rock climbing and mountain climbing and mountain descending and rock descending. Yeah, it takes a lot out of you. Yeah, exactly. So everyone was kind of dead. I took like 30, 40 milligrams of melatonin. I was like, well, if I die in my sleep, I die in my sleep. It's kind of up to whatever higher power there is. So I was out as soon as I closed my eyes. But I remember I woke up and I think nobody really slept that well because obviously... I think everyone actually did sleep well. It's just like like as well as you can for camping in a tent in the middle yeah. of the woods. Yeah, that's what I mean. But um, I think everybody shared the same experience of like waking up at uh, around like midnight or one in the morning and opening their eyes, but never realizing that they actually opened their eyes because it was genuinely pitch black. It, like it wasn't like dark like oh the light of the moon so you can see. It was like no, you literally could not see anything. You like. Like you could put your thumb to your to your nose and not be able to see your hand. Yeah, like I, I slept with like a hoodie and a beanie on, and I had the beanie over my eyes. And I remember when I woke up, I like opened my eyes and I was like, "Oh, I have the beanie on, so I can't see anything." And then when I pulled the beanie up, I still couldn't see anything, and I'm like, "Well, maybe I'm just still asleep." So, dude, I had a see, I had a moment of panic when that happened to me because like, I like. I I was having kind of trouble drifting off in the first place, and then once I did, it was great. But I had crazy, crazy dreams, and when I woke up, it was because I heard like m the person Jordan in my tent like move or something. But in reality, I thought I heard something hit our tent, so I was like mm -hmm. like startled awake. And then I remember like I knew for a fact my eyes were open because like I could feel the uh, 
kind of like the dryness of my eyes from sitting by the fire the couple hours before. Like I could tell that they were open. And yeah. I just remember thinking like, did I go blind? Like, like I genuinely thought I went blind and here was my logic. I was like this, I, I clearly like rub something into my eyes, like some chemicals or something. And I've just gone completely and utterly blind. I fumbled around in our tent for a good two minutes, found my flashlight, turned it on. I was so severely blinded by how, like, sudden the brightness was that I, I was, like, seeing spots and, it, oh, God, it was horrible. It, but it was dark. So dark. freaking dark. Yeah, very dark. But aside from that, the, I would say the trip was a great success. It was. Uh, we had uh, there was there were, there was a lot of ups. There's a lot of downs, literally and figuratively. Very true. And honestly, um, my only complaint just happened to be something more internal. It, it was like it was more uh, it, it was more a problem I had with attitude at first. But after that, you know, still like you said, a great trip overall. We survived. Got some banger exercise. Saw some trees, saw some peaks. What was our uh, peak elevation, Dan? We did our first 4K, which is 4,000 feet up, which we couldn't piece that together. Is that I don't, is that even that high, though? Um, 4,000 feet is very high up, but it's, I mean, compared to, like, Everest or, like, Kilimanjaro, that peak, can't really compare them. Well, but I mean, true. I mean, we did we did have to climb up there, and it wasn't like a, a steady walk upwards. No, I mean, four thousand feet, no matter how you look at it, is a good distance, and it took us a few hours to get there. So, a few hours. <laughs> I mean, it took us like no, I think it took us like uh, four or five to get to there, and then the descent down back to like two thousand feet was just dreadful. Well, not we dreadful, but that was my least enjoyable part. Well, we it took us from like three thousand feet to forty one hundred. I think it took us like an hour and some change to get up there. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, I don't know if we can really count it in hours because there was just some parts where it took us like an hour to climb a thousand feet, and then there are some spots where it took us like three hours to climb a thousand feet. Just because of how, like, the way the incline worked, I guess. The way the slope worked. Because it's not like it was, like, a steady increase, you know? It's like, yeah, oh, we I mean, had to, we had to walk, you know, sideways on a mountain for 20 minutes before we can go up it 100 feet, you know? Yeah, pretty much. But all in all, I mean, it was still a good hike. I had a lot of fun. And I can't wait to do it again. Maybe later this summer sometime next year. I mean, I don't see why we can't go back. It's a relatively co uh, like cost efficient, tr uh, like I don't want to call it like a vacation, but like a break from like the norm. Like we already yeah. have most of the equipment. Yeah, it's mostly that like I always think um, camping is going to be fun until I get to the point where it's like towards the end of the day, and then you have to set up camp when you've already gone up at like nine. And you've been hiking since like eight. See, that's I, when I'm like, this, fuck this. That's my favorite part is setting up camp because that's what makes it feel worth it. Like, I mean, setting up camp. Like, see, I I always got I I actually got ticked off on the trip because everyone was like so spent and they were like, nah, we want to chill and not set up camp. But I'm sitting there like, bro, we can literally not give a shit after camp is set up. And we can all relax instead of just some of us chilling and others running around doing stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people wanted to do stuff. Some people didn't want to do stuff. <laughs> Which when, doesn't... That that mindset doesn't work when it comes to camping. I just know. in case anyone's listening. Like, <laughs> thinking, like, that's an okay way to think. No. No, we are 10 miles into a mountain range. And there's no just casually being like all right i gotta go to the car i'm not really feeling this yeah but i mean like if you want to take a break before you set up i feel like there's no problem in that yeah i don't know because i guess it's a matter of perspective and convictions and whatnot yeah, i mean as long as everyone's doing a role i feel like it's whatever yeah 
eh, eh. I don't really want to argue this because I can't. I, I really can. I, I, I see. I personally feel like in a situation like that, it's not like everyone has the right to their own thing. Everyone should just shut up and listen to whomever's leading at the current time and just get it done with. Like I said, to each their own. There it is. But, you know... <laughs> I'm not arguing with you on anything. <laughs> hey, man. That's perfectly fine. But, besides the camping trip, we, um... Let's see. I think I... But there's one thing I wanted to mention from my week, right? So, I have been pretty much done with school for about a month, right? But <laughs> I, uh... I had a resurgence, and I was talking to one of my professors, and he was like, hey, would you mind just, like, you know, beefing up this essay, and we're going to use it for something? And I was like, all right, cool, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, I got you. Like, I agreed to it, and I was just like, no, no, yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'll, I'll gladly write an essay in summer. And I was, um, I was working on that, right? Just that, like, month, month and a half break from school... I don't even know how long it's been, actually, now I think about it. It's been about a month since I've been done with finals. Anywho, just that month break alone, it was it, it made me feel so much better about just working on something school-related. I, I felt clean. I felt like I wasn't being rushed. It was a good feeling, is all I'm trying to point out. Well, like, finally getting back to doing, like, your essay? Well, it was more like, it was a good feeling to, like, do school stuff and not be as stressed out as I was, like, towards the end of the semester, you know? Oh, that's fair, yeah. I mean, you're also the type of person that, like, kind of enjoys school. Oh, yeah, I mean, school, school, the reason why I enjoy school is because, like, it's instant gratification for the overwhelming most part. It's, you can track your own progress and your betterment in pretty much every scenario so it's like it's like a good thing for the mental for me to try and like make myself like just because it's the easiest thing to see progress in at least in my yeah, opinion like i can't think of anything else in life that i can currently be doing that like i get like results like that yeah i mean i guess you, you can make a claim for a lot of things like it's a lot of hobbies or like side projects but it's definitely personal well, preference well no no because no. think about it. school like literally like like yeah like you basically go there and the only thing you have to do is the work like the work gets graded for you it gets turned back like it gets handed back to you with comments and stuff like that like i'm just saying it's like the easiest thing to find gratification in like if all you want is just like to feel like you're actually accomplishing something yeah i mean i guess you can make the same claim about a job yeah, but like, what's the what's your gratification? I guess that depends vastly on the job, right? Because like, I've I've worked jobs where I just was like, ah, well, I don't feel like I'm doing anything important, so this sucks. But then I've had jobs where like, say when I was building a pool, I could see a hole in the ground get turned into you know a nice, you know, basin of water. Like there was gratification in that. But not in, like, Amazon, where I was just, like, putting things in a box and watching it roll away. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I view it as the gratification is the paycheck at the end of the week, or two weeks, depending on what you do. Oh, yeah. Dude. You get paid. Making money is definitely gratification enough. I agree with that. But, yeah, I mean, I've definitely... The majority of jobs I've worked has just been, like... Okay. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. And that's that. It'd be like that, but that was, yeah. that's, been, that's been my week. Well, I'm glad for you. I'm glad you are doing something you enjoy. Yeah. Also been playing video games and getting into the Star Wars universe a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying that. Dude, okay. So, to rant a little bit, right? So, I, I was never one that likes, that watched, like, Star Wars, the Clone Wars, like, the animated show when I was a kid. I was more like mm -hmm. the Avatar The Last Airbender crowd rather mm -hmm. than Clone Wars. And so I just went back and I've been watching Clone Wars because I've been have access to Disney Plus. And it's just like a, it's a genuinely good show. The writing is funny, you know, the animation's good. And I've just been really enjoying watching that show. It's uh it, it's very nostalgic of my childhood without me actually seeing it in my childhood. 
That makes sense. I, it's like the art style is very nostalgic. Like the way they mm. run in the show is very nostalgic. It's just an overall good experience. Yeah, I mean that series came out like 2007. And I feel like it holds up very well for uh, nowadays. Oh my gosh, yeah. And well, to be fair, the animation like literally got better every episode. Like that I've yeah. noticed so far. Like it really has just gotten better. Yeah, just never watch the um like Disney XD uh Rebels, I think it's called. I watch that. See, okay, I heard that there there was only a couple of good things that came out of Red Bulls. One is where you yeah. learn with like what happened with a few of the characters in the aftermath of the uh Empire. Yeah. But beyond that not really that good. Not not really that good at all, actually. The animation is like Paw Patrol esque. It's very, like five year old ish. I don't know. I mean, yeah. granted, like I guess Star Wars is very like. I don't want to say childish, but it's very. I mean, Rebels is definitely a kid show. Yeah, but yeah, I mean that was the only good thing is like I didn't watch it. I've just watched like clips and like I read the synopsis of it because I was curious if it uh expanded upon after clone wars and it did it it gives closure on a couple characters but it's still not worth watching mm-hmm that's just a big imo i wouldn't know yet uh, yeah you'll uh, figure out in time or i can just spoil the whole thing for you one day if you make me mad and then it's just gonna be a real bad time i mean to be fair i, I was talking about this with one of my friends that likes star wars like yeah you already know how the story ends, right? You just don't know how they get there. So really, any like you could spoil it, but like unless you give me the specific seasons and episodes and the situation surrounding it, like I wouldn't even know what's happening until it happened. And I'd be like, oh, that's the thing he spoiled. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's fair, actually. That's very fair. So like, I don't know. I it would, it would be hard to actually spoil that show for me unless like you just like nailed me with a synopsis of a whole season. <laughs> Yeah, which the worst part is I probably could. Like yeah. I, I feel like I remember that show by heart. God, it's so at good. At this point, sure. Um, well, I mean, lucky for you, Bobby. Star Wars could be a real thing. <laughs> uh, great segue, Daniel. Yes. Well, apparently, there could be thirty-six intelligent civilizations in our Milky Way galaxy. So, according to studies. So, okay, so the studies isn't really, like, uh, the the way that they came to this conclusion, I say they, is because I'm not entirely sure what uh what scientific group is taking claim for this, because I don't mm. think it's NASA. I think it's, like, CETI or some shit like that. Anywho, what they did is they used a calculation, an old calculation called Drake's Equation, and they took that and they made some assumptions on like basically their their what led them to be able to figure this out was they assumed that for one thing earth is not unique they assumed that any planet roughly our size that is a decent distance away from a star that's not too big could hold life and that being said, they also calculated any, like, and then they gave it, like, a range of about 4 billion years, because that's what it took for our planet to, you know, create life, theoretically. So, they just kind of... Really, what this is, is they just assume that, logically, there has to be at least 30 or so planets that are the exact same as ours, thus guaranteeing life on them. Yeah, which I find hilarious, because I feel like this assumption could be made with literally zero, like, research or background knowledge, you know what I mean? Well, th that's quite literally it. Like, this calculation that they say, like, we we came to this conclusion by taking some very simple assumptions, but those simple assumptions is quite literally what, like, sets aside, you know, us, Earth being, Earth being unique to then Earth being a mathematical anomaly. Hmm. Like, it, it, there's a difference. And it is cool to think, like, oh, there could be planets in our galaxy. But the thing is, that really doesn't mean much 
when you think of every star that we can see and like like our star happens to have eight balls rotating it you know what i mean like yeah i mean it also doesn't mean much because a lot of the i mean not a lot but like all of these uh inhabitable planets are not accessible to us anytime soon and that's that's exactly it um they were saying like we we barely even had the technology to try and reach said planets with like radio waves and anything like that anyways so i don't know it is a very interesting thought though that we are getting to the point where we are like logically assuming that there is life out there and we're trying to make steps to contact them yeah it's it's very interesting to see how like like, I feel like as a society, we're very, like, advanced. Obviously, like, we're always going to be advanced compared to what we were, but, like, within the past, like, 20 or so years, I feel like we've made incredible, like, technological advancements. But it's crazy to think, like, how it feels behind we are in terms of, like, space exploration. Well, we say behind based off our, like, our, like, sci-fi, like, precon like preconceived notion of, like, what we should be at, right? Yeah, it's like, it's big air quote seasons with behind, but yeah. you know what I mean. Exactly, like, because we know that there's so much more that we could be doing, you know? There's a lot more that we know will eventually be possible. It's just we really have to figure out how to get it to be possible. Yeah, it's just like, you know, we got self-driving cars, we got fucking iPhones, like handheld computers and shit. It's like, all oh, that's impressive, but it's like... When am I going to be able to see an alien in my lifetime, you know? Well, that's kind of what I found interesting about this article that talked about this, like, cornucopian calculation. It's it's roughly 30 active, communicating, intelligent civilizations that they're, they're guessing with this. Not just, like, plants that could have life. Like, they're, they're, they're literally saying that there should be 30 or so planets... That have a civilization roughly like our own that is making attempts to be able to communicate and like exist like our very own, mm. which I find that more interesting because like before it was like oh there's so many plants that could have life but they're like no like there should be thirty to thirty six planets that have civilizations like our own and that's very interesting. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's super fucking weird to me. Like, I, every time we talk about space, I'm always just kind of like... Like, I feel like I know what I'm talking about at the same time I know literally nothing. I, yeah, see, that's the thing, because, like, people are always like, yeah, well, like, what if, like, we gotta fight oxygen, but, like, what if, like, organic life doesn't need oxygen to a certain degree? Like, well, what if there's a shit ton of plants out there that don't have an excess of oxygen, but somehow they have an excess of helium, and this creature happens to breathe well with helium-rich air rather than yeah. oxygen-rich air? Or, like, an entirely new element that, like, we have no idea what it is, but, I mean, like, it's... That is possible. The theoretically, that... Is, like, I don't see why that was that isn't possible, that there's just a shit ton of elements that we are completely unaware of, strictly because we can't find them on Earth, and we just haven't synthesized them yet. Well, I mean, it's... it's I would say more than entirely possible. It's the same as, like, we don't know what the fuck's in our oceans. We've only discovered, like, 10% of it, 3% of it. It was one of those numbers. Well, yeah, but, like, like, when you think about it like that, it's still... Like, in terms of science and elements, like, you look at the ocean, you know everything down there is probably just, like, carbon, nitrogen, and, like... like well, no, I, I'm saying, like, out of, like, everywhere in the world, I would imagine that there's, like, to-be-discovered elements just, like, hanging around in, like, small crevices of the world. Oh, could be. I mean, who knows, really? I don't. <laughs> well, why don't you, man? Yeah, I thought you were the smart one here. I'm just the one that... <laughs> So the catchy one-liners, you're the smart guy. You're right, I'm I'm the literal big brain sheen Elon Musk of this podcast, and everything I say should is scientifically backed by my own research. Yep. Yours. <laughs> not not the articles or where you read it from, it's yours. No, <laughs> my own. Yeah, I am I'm certified I am qualified to talk about this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Beyond the, qualified the even. The the CNN article for this uh for this whole topic. Wrote by uh, me. Bobby wrote it. The 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 calculations that this article is based off of my calculations. Yes, the um, the fuck is called the the Dr the Drake 
the Drake equation? Well, it's actually the astrobiological cornucopian principle is what the is what they evolved Drake's equation from. Aubrey Graham. <laughs> astrobiological no. cornuc or copper. Nikin Copernican ah astrobiological Copernican principle that's that Dude. that's that's what it is how'd you forget your own equation dog that's crazy I, I think I said cornucopian at first to be quite honest with I, you you probably did but like I'm not gonna judge I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ju judge you I wouldn't no maybe I don't know regardless I don't know I <laughs> this is this is jumping into not a different topic but like a different idea I hope when I die that I can see, like, what happens on Earth, like, millions of years from now. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Like, I straight up don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> like, just, what the know, fuck? Like, what, what's the response to that? <laughs> I just, you just say, yep, me too, Dan. And I say, cool, next topic. All right, ne next topic. You know what we're going to talk about? Something that's not as crazy as that. However... Something that I found very interesting. Kanye West filed for a trademark on Yeezy makeup and perfume. Now, I know that's a far reach from space and vastly less interesting on a certain degree. Point being, I found this interesting because... What? Like... What do you think possessed Kanye to market makeup and perfume specifically? I mean, I'd imagine Kim. I'd imagine if anything... They, they have their have, own like lines. I know, but I wouldn't be surprised if they all, like, collaborated on one big thing. <sighs> Which, to be fair, I've heard, like... Yeezy Beauty nothing. is what they're calling huh? it. They're calling it Yeezy Beauty. He's just... This, I don't know. Uh, Kanye did a lot for, uh, like, recently from, like, donating for, like, Black Lives Matter. So he's on, he's on the good list for me. But I'm always just so perplexed by what Kanye does. But... It's like, okay, I, I guess it, like, I found this more interesting strictly because, given the Yeezy name, everything's going to be obscenely expensive, right? Oh, yeah. But, like, there are things like makeup, fake lashes, face masks, nail polish, body oils, shaving creams, hair care, perfume, toothpaste, and even deodorant, right? Mm -hmm. How much do you think the markup is going to be on something like that that is literally, like, the more you use it, the less you have left, you know, like how, like, do you think it will be like his shoes and his clothes, where it's like so astronomically expensive that like you you basically don't? Well, no, I think it's entirely different because like Yeezy for clothing is expensive due to the resale value. Like, granted, like the shit he sell, like the um, did his shoes drop for, for like three hundred or something like that? No, the shoes sell like off the rip for like one eighty two hundred, which of air quote high like high um, fashion shoes that's like a normal price, but they'll resell for like four hundred, and it's the same with the clothes. I mean, granted, he'll put a t shirt up with a hole in the middle, and he'll say like, "I just shit myself," and he'll put it up for like ninety, and people are like, "Oh man, Kanye did it again." But I feel with like clothes, you can wear out until like you rip them or whatever with makeup there is a set amount you can use yeah in, like, care products all right so like we got faith that they won't be like that yeah i mean the max you can upsell is like 20 30 bucks more which is still shitty but like when you have a brand that's that popular you kind of can do whatever you want if so it looks like one of the most recent or a, a easy drop in 2018 on retail oh wait this was their adidas collab never mind okay as i said the easy boost went for 350 on on drop i'm just trying to think basically what the point is is how much do you think a, like a deodorant stick is going to cost with kanye's easy tag on it oh, i, I want to guess i want a literal guess i'm gonna guess 35 35 yeah it'll probably be like a pissed rug and Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know, it, it really could be a terrible set, and people would just buy it because it's Kanye stuff or I, Yeezy I mean, stuff. Have you, seen, have you seen his home? It literally like the smell would probably be like nothing. It'll just be a placebo, and people are like, "Damn, this is so good." <laughs> Jesus. I don't know.
I, I I'm comfortable with thirty thirty like around thirty dollars. Yeah. Would I pay thirty dollars for deodorant? No. Know. God no. And if any of my friends did, I would I like I would like to say I wouldn't judge them, but I would judge them to the point where I would like question their ability to even have money. Like oh, they they I don't mean, deserve their own checking account. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I don't disagree. I, I have a couple friends I would probably pay that much if it was like a supreme fucking stick of deodorant. It's all about the brand, man. Dude, People... I'd put my head through a window if if you someone was like, dude, I just bought the new Supreme deodorant. I'm like, how much? And like, bro, I copped it for fifty, bro. Resale's like three hundred. Yeah, it's like, eh, I don't know. Anybody will do anything for like brand name shit. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, I'm interested in this because, like, to my knowledge, a lot of like, like Kylie Jenner's makeup. I know Kylie specifically, like, her makeup's very shitty, but people buy it because it's Kylie Jenner, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, I've never heard anything about makeup. Actually, the only thing I know about the makeup world, right, is that there's someone called Jeffree Star and, like, I don't know, James Charles out there that put out their own makeup, and apparently that's good. That's that's all they know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a makeup person. Yeah, I can't say I'm too huge in it either, but I, I do see a lot of, uh, like, videos of, um, like, her makeup just kind of, like, dying out over a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot quicker than most makeup will. I don't know. I don't use makeup. Not yet. Maybe someday I will. Huh. You know, I'm I'm excited to see where this turns out to be, though, for the easy products, that is. I mean, all it is is a trademark at the moment. Like, f they don't even have to really follow up on it at the moment. Yeah, but I, I imagine they will within the next, like, few years. Yeah, it, it seems like they'll probably combine it with the, uh, the Kim the Kim K West beauty stuff and the uh, fragrance and all that stuff. Like, I'm sure they'll yeah. uh, combine forces under one big thing. See, us not being huge into makeup, I feel like that seems like a monopoly. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how big the makeup world is. Like, I have a small general idea. But I feel like that would be kind of monopolizing, though. Uh, I'm gonna say no, just because I'm aware of, like, full-blown stores that sell only makeup that my, like, female family members frequent. Yeah, you got, like, Sephora and shit. D literally, that's the one. It, like, Sephora. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that is. All I know is that my, that my mother enjoys going there. One of my aunts likes to order stuff online that's makeup-related. They get, like, big-ass, like, goodie boxes full of that stuff. I don't really get that's that. nice. Have you ever been in a Sephora? Uh, no, I've actually managed to avoid it in my entire 21 years of life, and that, like, is impressive considering all the stores I've been dragged into by my family. I feel that. See, like, I've been in Sep Sephora, like, on my own free will and, like, not on my own free will. Like, if a friend, uh, like, if I'm not with a friend, they're like, I want to check out Sephora. I'm like, whatever. Oh, okay. I was like, so, like, you went there to purchase? <laughs> I'm just fucking up in Sephora. No. But, like, every time I go there, I feel uglier. I just feel... Like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I look at the people working there, and they're always just so beautiful, and I'm like, damn, I really do be looking like this. Sheesh, bro. I I was on a, uh, you know, like, Fifth Avenue, I think it's Fifth Avenue in New York, like, the, the, the street with, the, like, all the super expensive stores that have, like, like just their own Gucci stores and oh, Rolex yeah, stores. Dude. Like, that avenue. I was mm -hmm. I was there over winter break and we were just kind of, obviously I wasn't there purchasing stuff but we were just checking out all the super expensive stores. My god, we went into like ba like if basic on the outside it just looked like a tall building. You go inside and it's a huge mall and every like glass is just sparkling and rainbow. Everything it's super bright. It's literally like a mall that I've never been in before. It was crazy. The thing is, is I felt so out of place because one, every person there was beautiful, but two, everyone was like, their clothes made no sense to me. Like, because it was a mixture of designers, like designer clothes that were just like people in like really expensive suits and stuff. 
But then it was just like the hype beast style clothing of like fucking like camo pants with like a tie dye t shirt and shit like just cla- like clashing stuff like that that you can only pull off because those pants are six hundred dollars and because that t shirt is two grand. Yeah, I remember. Um, I I've done the same where like I think I've been to that same store and like they they would look the people that work there they like look at you and they can sense how much money you have and like when they know you don't have a lot like sometimes they'll they won't like escort you out but they'll be like what are you looking for today and you if you say like oh just looking around they give you like a oh you do it uh completely you know when we worked our way to the gucci store we uh we were like yeah we're looking for some belts and we had <laughs> them show us a whole different like just racks of belts like gucci belts that they had <laughs> Yeah. And we were really trying to act like we were gonna buy one because we were so sick of like people like kind of getting looked at like yeah we know you're not gonna buy something just like you know there there would be even times where they wouldn't be like oh are you finding everything like they would just like know that we weren't gonna say anything or gonna buy anything they know you're finding everything okay because you're not getting anything <laughs> straight up like no, I'm, I feel that. I'm, I pulled up I'm on sure a windbreaker they... sorry yeah, what I'm I'm sure they have like the fucking uh, like TikTok stars or like influencers come in and they're like 16 year olds and they think like, oh, he has no money. And then he pulls out like $200,000 in cash because you carry that around for whatever reason. I mean, yeah, bro. Same me. This is me. That is you. Like, I'm sure they get those people come in from time to time and they're like, oh, what a delight. Someone actually going to spend money. <laughs> Cause they're British. <laughs> cause yeah. Cause, cause they're British. It's a classy establishment. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the, when you think of, like, proper, you think of, like, a British accent for some reason, I don't know. I have to agree with that, and I don't know why, I'm gonna blame Disney for that, actually. I, I, I'm i yeah. actually gonna blame Disney for that, I feel like that's, like, an accurate thing to blame. I can get behind that, yeah. Fucking but Disney. Regardless. Regardless. Did we get there from Kanye? Kanye? We got there from Kanye. Brazy. Well, because we're talking... We're talking about, like, hype beasts and, like, expensive shit, so well, it makes sense. Speaking of expensive shit and high price tags, the new PlayStation 5 was announced, as well as a new Xbox product. But mm-hmm. I'd like to focus on the PS5, because that thing looks like a Wi-Fi router. Oh, my gosh. It's All right. crazy. I mean, like, okay. PS5, Xbox, come out. Everyone's excited. But the thing is... They have an $800 price tag, and I feel like that defeats the whole purpose of getting a console. It is definitely like, way less accessible. I feel like you you get a console because you're like, I don't have the money to buy a PC, but I want to play games. Or like, there's exclusives for a PS4. Or so mom's get getting you a console when you're like 12 for your birthday or something like that. Yeah, because like, I mean, 300 for an Xbox, like, it's still a lot, but it's a lot less than 800 Oh yeah, big. Di- there's like, a big difference, and it's like the hardware on these things are literally just like PCs. So why not just buy a PC? You know? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people would rather use consoles than PCs. I'm sure. Like, I know there's a lot of people are just blatantly intimidated by the fact that there's a keyboard and mouse connected to it. You know? Like, yeah, it is I what mean, it I- is. I've had a PC for the past, like, my own PC for the past six years, and I still, I'm very intimidated on upgrading because I don't know what the fuck anything is. Yeah, so, doesn't, like, I get that. I get that. But, I get that. But, but, mm-hmm. at the same time, like, when you, when you have an $800 price tag, and then your console is known for exclusives, it's kind of like... It's like, damn, there's now, like, I bought a PS4 just to have because I know that, play like, Sony releases, like, exclusives that are pretty good for the PlayStation. It's good just to have. And it, I got it for a relatively cheap amount. But the thing is, like, it came out, like, three for, like, 350 when the PlayStation first came out, 400 right? I got it for, like, 200 or so just uh just cuz it was a couple years later like a couple mm. years later of 800 still is still like 700 fucking bucks you know what i mean, I mean that's the thing is like i feel like they don't like consoles don't go down if they're popping off like switch hasn't dropped in price cuz switch is like very popular everybody loves nintendo switch i so 
I just think the price tag it will actually be like a huge negative for uh, for their like exclusives market because now a lot less like because a lot less people now will just have that console for their exclusives because they can't warrant spending eight hundred dollars for I don't know insert exclusive here like I bought like I bought a PlayStation just because like. Uh, Monster Hunter dropped on that. Now, if a game early yeah. drops on a play on PlayStation Five, I'm not going to go spend seven hundred dollars so I can play a sixty dollar game anymore. Yeah, and also my main thing of this is like I remember. Uh, I mean, a lot of the um, like appeal of a console is like you can just hook it up to your TV and like it doesn't take up a lot of space. But this thing is fucking huge. Like <sighs> it's over. It's an oversized tower, and I'm thinking like. Because I know um, a lot of people, they'll, like, put it where their TV is. They have, like, the whole, uh, what the fuck do you call it? Media cabinets? Yeah, media cabinet. Thank you. Where, like, you'll just slap the PS4, like, towards the bottom. But, like, this thing you got to have, like, on the side or just, I don't know. Because you can't put it on its side, I don't think. It doesn't look like it, but, like I'm, like, I'm sure they can change the design of that, like, at any point to make it be able to be on its side. But it still takes yeah. up a lot of space. Uh, I can't wait for... Well, because it's innately in white and black, I can't wait for them to release an all-black one and hike up the price on it because it's all yeah, black. At, like, at that point, you just buy a PC. Like, a, a $1,000 thousand, a PC as opposed to a $900 PlayStation, you'd get a lot more bang for your buck, I feel. Well, because technically... The, the reason why PC gaming is always going to be more cost-efficient than console is because, like you can always upgrade parts of your computer depending on what you need to like advance with the times worse yeah. with a console like you will constantly be on that ebb of flow of like you get it when it's new and it's good for the time and then four years later graphics are better so then you're kind of like damn this isn't that good then the new console comes out and it's like a loop over and over but with a pc you can kind of set your own like pace when it comes to like upgrading and moving on yeah like you said true. you've had the same pc for like the last six years or so right yeah where it's like there's been probably there's there's been different iterations of consoles since then but the point being is like during that six year period, like you, you could just upgrade your graphics card if you want to have like better graphics. You could up, like you could do a lot more with the computer than you can with the console. So it just like the value just keeps extending, I guess. Yeah, I I don't know. I feel like my just my main gripe with all of this is like it looks cool and like the hardware is definitely like very good on it, but I feel like the whole my whole reason for console is the like uh portability and like the cheapness of it and all that jazz and, like the accessibility but you slap something at fucking eight hundred dollars it's not as inviting <laughs> nor near as inviting it, it well that's the thing like it, it's just so hard to get behind because like like before if you just wanted to pop off and buy buy a ps4 or an xbox you could be like you could kind of like when it's at that like sub five hundred dollar price point, you could kind of get away by with saying like I'm treating myself. It's been a while or something like that. But like when it's like eight hundred fucking dollars, that's that's like that's like a talk to your parents, talk to whomever. Like that's like a check the budget type of thing. And I I guess that's more for my own situation. I guess given the fact I'm a college student. But like still eight hundred dollars is a lot just to you know just to just to play games on i guess because i don't want to say just to play games on because i play games a lot but like it's not like a cell phone where like you need it in this day and age to really be like a person yeah and it's like i also know a lot of people that use their ps4 is just like a netflix bot or like they use it for all just to watch movies and shit Mm. And I can't see myself spending eight hundred dollars just to do that. Like, if that was the main reason for it, like it's it's more of an investment than a purchase, and I don't like that for a console. I can I can get behind that exactly. It's more of an investment than a purchase. Yeah, I don't know. Like it it looks cool, and the stuff they announced for it is cool. I just can't see myself wanting 
to spend 800 for it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's literally not something that... There is not a situation where I can see myself spending it or buying a new console anymore. Like, it is... Because now it just rivals the cost of upgrading my PC. That's... Yeah, I could... I could literally buy, like, a fucking very high-end graphics card for a PS4 or a PS5 and have, like, ten times the efficiency. Yeah. I don't know. It just, um... I don't know, it's... It's putting ourselves in a kind of a really weird day and age, I guess. Because, yeah. like, $800 is a lot, and it's a lot for a price to go down on as well. Because the thing is, like... Hardware loses value pretty damn fast, right? Like, yeah. like okay. For instance, my graphics card is currently currently goes for like four hundred, five hundred bucks, right? My one before that, when it was still going for like four hundred, five hundred bucks, now about six years later, it goes for like sixty. Yeah. Like, what do you? What's a what? What's the future of a PlayStation? Because like. How, like how, how how do they judge? Like I guess as price will go down. I don't know. I don't know. There's just a lot of things that are kind of fucky now that their price point just increased that much. Yeah, it just I don't know. It feels off because like even if not a lot of people buy it on release and they're gonna drop the price, it'll be like seven hundred, six fifty at the max. I couldn't see them going lower than that and expecting a profit. Mm. And, you know, it's kind of sad to think a lot of kids aren't going to be able to purchase this for themselves anymore either. Yeah, very true. Like, I remember, like, my brother, when he was getting his PlayStation as a kid, like, that was, it was like 200 bucks. Like, he, like, it would take a lot more time to a kid to work himself doing this than, I don't know, fucking. I mean, I'm even thinking of it as, like, a parent, because normally if you have a kid that likes to play games or they're asking for, like, the new console so they can play with their friends, you're not going to want to spend 800 for this. You're really There's not. No way. Because, like, you could always, like, I could always rationalize spending $400 on a console because I could be like, all right, in, like, a few, like, a, like a few AAA titles, I will basically have spent that much money on games anyways. So the price of the console will already be outweighed by the games. But then, like, you have to buy, like, over, over, over like, four, 13 or 14 games for you to eclipse the value of the actual system in itself. Yeah, true. And, that, and that's a lot. Like, that's a lot. Because no one's buying 14 to 15 games when they buy, a, when they buy the damn thing. You know, you're spending you're spending seven hundred bucks. I, I I'm buying a game and just hoping it could last me a year. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like if if like Sony's idea is to well, I guess and Microsoft like if their idea for like new gen consoles for for to have like a five to seven year longevity, then like it makes sense. Yeah, but even then, it, I don't know. It's it's like a hard price point to even hit because like VR is like a grand. This stuff's like a grand. Yeah. Like I don't know. I, mean, I guess the more we find out, the more we'll figure it out. Yeah, it just feels very odd. But with the PlayStation though, came a lot of cool game uh, games that they plan to release, like the the Miles Morales Spider Man game, the New Horizons game. There's a um. There's also like a a really cool game that I saw called Ghostwire, I think. Oh yeah, that was um they announced that at E3 last year. It looked really fucking cool. And you like you what that's the one where you walk around Tokyo like fighting spirits and stuff. Yeah. I that's not a PlayStation exclusive, right? Like they didn't just make that an exclusive. I hope not, man. I, I hope to find it on Steam at some point. I really um, do as well. I th- I don't know if I don't think it was a PS5 exclusive, but they also announced like a Demon Souls remake. Mm, that could be interesting. And I never got to play Demon Souls, so like maybe I'll check it out. But based on how Dark Souls uh, remastered came out, I don't know if I'd give it too much uh, thought. Mm, well, uh, well, to be fair, at least with like with the ori- like with the Dark Souls remastered, like you could get away with saying like just play the original, it's better. But like, n- no one wants to play Demon Souls because you can't. I was gonna say it's not accessible. It's li- it's literally not accessible. But I mean, 
regardless. I'm really, I'm really interested to see how the Miles Morales Spider-Man game will be. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of potential. Cause I mean, like, there is a bright side from these consoles being this expensive. Mm-hmm. Now developers, when they're making games, can really like full throttle it so when it hits pc we could have really fucking good graphics because we can just beat consoles by that much more now true because before they had to at least scale it for consoles but since the console scale went up the pc scale can now be lifted as well yeah now see on that note now we just need fucking like sony titles to be able to be on fucking steam or something See, I, I, I really feel like, th- like I, I'm calling this now, and I feel like with this newfound like price point for consoles, I, f- besides Nintendo, I can see exclusives dying for specific consoles. Like Nintendo yeah. will always do their exclusives, and I respect that they always have, always will. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo's always been different in terms of like the way you play their games is different than how you'd play it on like PC or with like an Xbox controller. Oh yeah, of course. Always has been. Like, like fucking Mario Kart, you can still use, like, the Wii remote, and you have the the wheel, um, like, <sighs> add-on that you put the remote in, and you can use that. Mm. Point. Was, yeah, you couldn't, couldn't get that to work on PC. But I'm calling it now. I, I, I think exclusives will be, like, so severely shunned at this point that companies won't be able to do it. Or at I least, so. they, they rather that they will lose money if they do it. Like, because yeah. re- re- they'll, they'll try it first, but then they'll have to compare, like, how well they sold on a PlayStation 4 to PS5, and then then I think exclusives will die. Yeah. Which Bottom is good. Line, get, blood bo- get Bloodborne on PC. <laughs> get Bloodborne on PC. Kill exclusives. Tired of it. Tired of play it. shit. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this isn't regarded to this, but um, there's a game called Mortal Shell that I've been interested in recently that is supposed to come out sometime this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like uh, there was like a 10 minute gameplay trailer that I could link you, but it seems like it's a seemed like Dark Souls esque uh, like environment of like very dark and medieval. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like the premise is like you're like. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but you take over, like, air quote shells, but it's, like, past, like, warriors, and you take their abilities, and I guess there's, like, four in the game or something. I don't know. The concept of it just seemed very, like, niche and interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm excited, excited for it. it. Yeah. Well, uh... I'm trying to, like... I've been, like, religiously following it for a while now, and I haven't really done that with a game in a while. Mm. I, when they when they announced it last year, I was excited for it. So I'm happy to see that it's actually come along. Yeah. It, the only thing is, like, the combat looks kind of slow, but mm-hmm. it's also not even like out. I guess there's like a closed beta at some point in July, but oh, that's, that's pretty soon. It. Yeah. I've also been getting back into Destiny, which has been fun. Oh yeah, how's that? I heard they had a massive content update. Uh, not yet. In the fall. Oh, in the was fall, it In the fall is the next expansion, so I'm trying to just, like, level up to get to a point where I can participate in it. Neato, neato. Yeah. I mean, like, the core gameplay hasn't changed that much, and it's very, like, grind bounties, grind weekly, daily bounties, have mm-hmm. fun. Which, it gets repetitive, but I feel like, since I've taken such a break from the game, that it's, it's fun again. Mm-hmm. Um... So. I think Steam Summer Sales are at uh, start today as well, I think. Oh, did you buy um, Fallen Order at full price, by the way? No. Okay, because it's $30 right now. No, I have... Uh, no, I was... Uh, I scooped that the day it went on sale, actually. Yeah, uh, Jordan just bought it. He did. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd be interested. I... I feel like there's not a lot of games I want to buy because there's actually like a few games that I've been wanting to play or I've been playing recently. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Unless like Devil May Cry goes on sale, then I'll scoop that. Hell yeah, bro! But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
So I, I'm looking at it right now because I was curious. Oh, the Steam. I I don't know if like it's if this, this is an actual Steam summer sale yet. I know they have like an event or something going on right now. Yeah. Who kn- who guess. knows? I don't. <laughs> Why not? I don't know, Dan. I just don't know a lot of things, man. I feel that. Um, last bit of news. Some good news, but it's also like news that I feel like shouldn't be news. But it was, um, I guess, it, it was still legal in, like, 29 states for, um, like, uh, jobs and, like, uh, housing and shit to be able to turn you away based off, like, your orientation. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're, like, gay, bi, uh, trans or whatever. But that finally got, like, abolished, I think, yesterday or over the weekend. So that was very cute. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And this is National Pride Month, so... Everybody out there, I hope you were kicking it. I hope you're having a good time. If you're coming out, good luck with that. It'd be a scary thing. It's weird because like I've had a lot of uh, friends recently come out um, this month. It's been very, very nice to see. I'm very happy for them. Uh, I feel that actually. I I've seen more like a lot more people of um like a lot more people that like i kind of just assumed were like actually openly talking about it on social media recently so i was like that was cool to see people just kind of being more open with themselves which is always nice yeah it's definitely like i don't know it's a very difficult thing to like do and to be able to come out like depending on how your family is because i feel i couldn't imagine having like very conservative parents and being like gay or bi Mm, nah, I mean, it's a struggle that I personally don't have to deal with, and I can't imagine it, but, I mean, I just hope that when I, when I do have kids, and when our generation does have kids, we can finally normalize coming out, or not even, like, normalize coming out, like, personally, I'd rather, like, my kids not even feel the need to come out, like, if they just want to show up with, you know, whomever, they show up with whomever. Exactly, I mean, it, I agree with that, but if my kids, like... 16 comes home with like a 25 year old oh I'll veto that shit well okay i i mean like in terms of like i don't want my kid to feel like they have to like climb that mountain i just don't even yeah. want them to see it as one personally yeah, I mean, like it shouldn't be like i feel i don't know i i don't want i don't know why um par- like some parents feel so disrespected if like their child comes out like, yeah so didn't raise you this way it's like bitch what you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's it's very insensitive. I don't know. It's yeah, it's please. our generation's job to kind of put that in the past. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, like based on everything that's going on, I feel like we're doing a good job. But mm-hmm. everything's kind of like a one step at a time recently. Oh yeah, most definitely. It's been a fucking bonkers ass world lately. Very bonkers. <laughs> is, uh, is that the word? Yeah. Alright. Take yeah. it. Very bonkers, but bro. If you'd like to, friend, I feel you have the right to bring us home. Alright. Alright. Alright, folks, that has been the Frying Pan Podcast, episode 85. Thank you for tuning in, as always. We are on social media. The handle for both of those is the Frying Pan Pod, and you could leave us any kind of message on there, or you can send us over a message on our email, which is in the pan podcast at gmail.com. And thank you for tuning in to us on any of these audio platforms. If you could leave a like a comment, that'd be much appreciated. And that has been all for me, folks. I've been Robert D'Onofrio. It's also Robert D'Onofrio. And we've been the frying pan podcast. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great rest of your day. Remember the pandemic's still not over. Stay safe. Wear your masks. Have a good one. Oh, yeah, no, hold on. Before you fucking wrap it up, if I see one more fucking old person at Stop and Shop just complaining about wearing a mask, I'm just going to kill them. All right, we're ending it there. Goodbye. (laughs)